Thank you so much. Great. Good evening. Thank you very much. It's, it's a great privilege to be here this evening. And I want to thank the center, the center for having me here to talk a little bit about some of my ideas of how we can build a culture of empathy through art. For me, one of the greatest challenges of the 21st century is to make people more visible to each other, to find ways for people to engage and learn of each other's deepest values and concerns. We need to lay the foundations for a new human identity, one that transcends differences and is predicated on mutual understanding, one that celebrates the beauty of difference. My art is all about empathy. Currently, our society is set up much like a fight club. It is somewhat adversarial, and it is, it is really not designed to elicit the collective. For me, this has to be the paradigm shift uh, towards the collective going forward in the 21st century. I want to start with a definition, though, on empathy itself. I think there are sort of two definitions, but they're totally intertwined. The first is imaginative empathy, stroke cognitive empathy, which is putting oneself in the shoes of the other. It is an act of genuine interpersonal emotional sharing. The second, which I think is equally important, perhaps even more so, is actually self-empathy, the sensory awareness, if you like, mindfulness. The two are inherently connected. And the real jihad, as Salman Ahmad, the wonderful Pakistani musician, says, is, is all about the battle of the ego. And for me, the more I learn in my life, traveling around the world, talking to different peoples of culture, of different persuasions, is it has to be about how we change ourselves. We can't just try and connect with the other, but we actually have to look in and try and understand why we have these prejudices. It's certainly my story as I grow is I'm trying to get over my uh, prejudices from my background from England. So and that's a nice segue really into one of my first images, which is really the epitome of em empathy. It is a very literal, a very explicit juxtaposition. The leaning in of two social, social religious groups, identities supporting one another. The physical proximity of separate identities together. This, in a sense, is a very idealized version of empathy. The question is, is how can we reach this place authentically? With my photography and with the subsequent pieces that I wish to share with you this evening, I want the viewer to contemplate the work by thinking out of the box, out of his comfort zone, and notice the relationships that are being depicted and their emotional states when we try and get inside the other's reality. When we do that, empathy arises. Humanity is designed to be interconnected, not separated. So when we are separated, we begin to fear. And when we fear, we learn to hate. And of course, I'm paraphrasing the great Martin Luther King. I want to talk about the need for em empathy in our daily lives and how by trying to bring out the emotional side of our very being will help us not only understand notions of otherness better, but actually help heal ourselves, thus reaching our potential as conscious human beings. Art, after all, is soft power, and in motion and acts as a portal towards, participate, towards the participant having more of an empathetic experience. This next image is on first inspection, perhaps it's, it's some eccentric hotel or parlor with butterfly prints adorning the walls. The narrative could be a respectable orthodox Jewish man in negotiation with a lady over something. There seems to be a proposition going on, but we we're not really quite sure. It's not totally explicit. He sits ready to negotiate. He sits ready to negotiate, and she can barely look at him. Or perhaps she's just being a little coy. The true story, though, is a composite image. It's Yudi, an ultra-Orthodox Jew on the right, glancing actually at himself, but in his alto ego as Sylvia Sparkelstein. This is what he transforms to in, this is what he becomes at night. The butterflies in the background, you can't really see them in, in, on, on this presentation, sadly, but the butterflies represent that transformation. And many of the other pictures fill in, the more of his Jew, fill in more of his Jewish narrative, capturing the tension between his conservative orthodoxy and his secular transgender identity. 
This is about empathy towards variations of sexuality, proclivity, and identity. We need to take an imaginative leap into another person's life. There are many shades of sexuality. If we judge so hard the other, I believe that raises just as many questions about the viewer doing the judging than the subject viewed. What makes us feel uncomfortable, and why does it make, it make us feel uncomfortable? These are the questions we have to ask ourselves. By staying conscious, we take the pain and fear out of our judgments and are more accepting. We learn more about ourselves. In a sense, this image is also about ideas of what is masculine and feminine and how we define ourselves. It also touches on IQ, intelligent quotient, and emotional quotient, EQ, the latter so often associated just with the feminine, which is a nice segue, actually, into my next piece, which is a symbol of balance and empowerment, a complete symbol of freedom, the subjective reconciliation of tradition and modernity, maybe even capitalism and religious belief. I shot this in Abu Dhabi in the desert earlier this year, um, it symbolizes many things. It's a very symbolic interpretation of, em of empathy. It's dealing with gender, women's position in the world, of course, and in particular, the woman's position in the Middle East. This image is also slightly tongue-in-cheek. It provokes a reflection of desire, sexiness, the, the burqa and the leg, the Louis Vuitton shoes. Um, but it also, more importantly and more seriously, talks about the sacred feminine to me, the great Indian mystic, Aurobindo said, if there is ever to be a future, it will clearly wear the crown of feminine design. Unless we awaken to the mystery of the sacred feminine and allow it to penetrate every area of our activity, creating harmony, we will die out and take nature or a large part of it with us. Which leads me into my next piece, which I shot in Kuwait two years ago on the border of Kuwait and Saudi at the largest oil refinery in the world, I believe. And this is um, called The Roar of Nature. It actually sits in my friend Stephen Appel's um, bedroom, or his sitting room. And um, it is about ecological empathy. And uh, it's more of a literary, literal type of empathy here, but it speaks to a need for a new paradigm shift within the te context of green technology. Uh, we, are, we have already embraced that paradigm shift, but we have much more space to move within it. I feel the bull camel is, a, is roaring in anger at the change of his environment, which is analogous to man wanting to find a better balance between the built and natural worlds. My next piece is called Transcendence Under Cassiopeia, and this is um, a group of Sufis performing the whirling dervish. I shot this in Turkey two years ago. It's a composite photograph, so I photographed the whirling dervish at, um, I think, about a quarter of a second the, the, the exposure was. And then the stars, I, it was a 35-second exposure. And actually, what I love about it is you can see, I don't know whether you're interested in astronomy, but you can see Perseus and Cassiopeia there. And actually, Ursa Minor is just part of Ursa Minor is there, and Ursa Major is there. Um, Muslims regard Jesus who was originally a Jew, as the greatest prophet, emphasizing the spiritual path towards the divine. Sufism has influenced Kabbalism hugely in the last 300 years. We're all so much more interconnected than many of us like to admit, and I just want to be able to share that connectivity. The word divine actually comes from the Sanskrit word diva, which means inner light or illuminated. In a sense, we're all stardust. This is the empathy of the spirit. So my last piece here, I shot this only last week when I was in Jerusalem with Mark Rosenblum with the Americans for Peace Now. I, the thing about this is this is where I'm at. Um, this is an image which is much more honest. Um, it's, it, it tells me about me. I'm at the edge of curiosity. We must not fall asleep. We must stay conscious. Um, I'll never quite know how you feel. You'll never know how I feel. But we, we have to try and um, um, stay present and maintain an intense curiosity about the world. Um, in a way, it's up to you. So I invite you to look at this. Is she looking at him or is she looking past him at us? We're involved in this 
narrative, which for me is analogous with the fact that we all have to um, try and, and embrace empathy and, and get involved and, and communicate with one another. The success of healing of those different registers, creating a location where that feeling can take place, is the job of an artist. So even through the payos and niqab, we have to find a way. So I'm now just going to sum up and talk about reimagining America. Um, I wanted to really speak about something larger than America. America represents, in many sense, the world. It's exciting for me to be based here in New York. I've only been here 18 months. Um, it's a melting pot. Um, but my wish, really, for America, and by extension humanity, is for us to develop a greater sense of self-awareness, um, which will help elicit greater empathy towards other people. And I very much like the words of P Provost Stella talking about the emotional side. It really resonated with me today, because I think uh, emotional, um, emotional intelligence is much misunderstood and sort of uh, it needs to be encouraged much more in our educational system and in the way we live our lives. I think that will create a huge amount of healing. So I'll just leave you with a couple of last quotes. The first is um, what Professor Mark Rosenblum said earlier, is we need to build a case for the other. And really, the key to change is to let go of fear. Thank you very much.